All right, let's go. Let's start this video out at the map that I always do at the start of these videos. So we ended the last quest here at the Drimroll Dale, and this quest picks up here on the eastern edge of Lorien. So what happens in between these two points? Well, a lot, and it's a bummer that we skip this. So let's go to my deck. Okay, so here's my build. So when the Fellowship enters into Lorien, they run into Haldir and his two brothers, Orofin and Rumiel, and some other Sylvans. The Sylvans use feigned voices to lure the orcs away, and then they destroy the orcs. It happens off page, but this is the big combat scene we get for elves. There's no other point except for when, you know, Legolas is interacting with the Fellowship that we see elves actually do combat. So I wanted to include Sylvans and elves at some point in this thematic playthrough. We're going to have Rohan, we're going to have Gondor. We're never really going to have a chance to see the dwarves go into battle, but this is the only chance we'll get to see the elves do fighting. They do not show up at Helm's Deep. Also, while they're in Lorien, that's when they interact with Galadriel a lot. We have Galadriel and her mirror. It's a whole chapter. Seemed weird to skip that. Uh, we talk about Nenya. And then as the Fellowship is leaving Lorien, of course, we get our cloaks with our leaf brooch. And then there are boons that Galadriel gives. And I just, I just really wanted to include Galadriel in this playthrough at some point. I could have used the ally version, and she does hand out gifts as an ally. But I really wanted to include the mirror and Nenya because it's so important in the book. Uh, Lembus, of course, uh, thematic as well. So I didn't want to skip the Sylvans and have them not have a chance to show their quality in this playthrough. As far as fighting goes for the Fellowship, it mostly falls on Boromir. So this is Tactics Boromir, and then he can do his Boromir bomb as a self-sacrifice to protect the hobbits. So we do have Hero Pippin, then Merry is in the deck as well. Sam's in the deck. So I do have what remains of the Fellowship in the deck. Aragorn himself, not like in the movie. He doesn't do much fighting. He's actually a mile away from Boromir when Boromir starts blowing his horn. So Aragorn just shows up and Boromir's already been pierced by many black arrows. And then the same thing happens with Gimli and Legolas. They show up even later and it says it looks like they'd been hunting. Legolas's quiver was empty. So the Fellowship itself doesn't do much fighting except for Boromir. So I got Boromir, he's got his shield, he's got his horn, he's got some Gondorian discipline, he's got the horns cry. So I tried to make this deck as thematic as possible for Boromir, and then I also wanted to include the events that the quest skips involving the Sylvans taking out the orcs that were chasing the Fellowship out of Moria. And then finally, we get to include Clebrian Stone, because Aragorn gets Clebrian Stone while he's leaving Lorien. So it's nice that we finally have access to this. Last thing I wanted to say about this deck, it is a Bond of Friendship deck, so I can only have 50 cards. I have to include 10 cards from the Leadership, Lore, Spirit, and Tactic Spheres. I cannot include more than two copies of any card by title in my deck. And then when I'm choosing my heroes, I get to choose four instead of three, and they all have to belong to different spheres. So that's why I have Leadership Aragorn, Tactics Boromir, Spirit Galadriel, Lore Pippin, and then, of course, uh, I have my Frodo, so I got money bags Frodo again. And then if you go to charts, you can quickly see if you did it right. So 10, 10, 10, 10. And then I have more than 50 cards because the boons we earned in Rivendell don't count against your deck limit. So that's why it looks like I have more. But I do have exactly 50 cards. I don't I don't have more than two copies of any cards, and I got exactly 10 of all the spheres. So very high starting threat of 38, but Gladriel is going to help a lot because she can drop your threat by one and draw you a card every single round. And then I also have uh, a little bit of threat reduction with Elrond's Council. That's always thematic because everything that we do from the point that we left Rivendell is based on the Council of Elrond. So I should be able to keep my threat dropped down, and maybe I can get lucky and play Thorngill, which will let me grab Lore Aragorn, and I can do a massive threat drop. This is how I decided to do this portion of the saga, and let's get back to the table. Okay, breaking of the Fellowship. So here are all the boons that I have. You can pause and read these. I'm assuming you're following along, so you've been hearing me talk about these. Here's some of the burdens that are shuffled in the deck, and then here are the two burdens that start in play. So if you haven't seen these before, uh, give the video a pause. You can read it, but I'm assuming you've been following along, and you've heard me explain what these cards do a number of times. All right, 
So this uh, quest can be easy and it can be hard. I mean, it's it's sometimes inconsistent. If you don't get enemies right off the bat and you're just getting locations, uh, it's not that bad. But if you get enemies in the staging area early on, uh, it can be a real bugger to try to beat. Okay, uh, so we get to look at four boons and then pick one. And that gets to stay with us for the rest of the campaign. And then we're going to shuffle two treacheries into the encounter deck. I already did that. Okay, we have Leaf Wrapped Lembus uh, attached to a hero. And you can ready all heroes. Three Golden Hairs. You get to draw three cards and drop your threat by three. The File of Gladriel. Ah, give all enemies minus four attack that are engaged with you. And then Lorian Rope helps you get through locations. Now these are all one and dones. So these are one-time use boons that we will get to use from this point forward in the campaign. But once we use them, they're done. I'm going to choose Leaf Wrapped Lembus. You gotta love action advantage, and readying all your heroes is pretty huge. 1A, the Great River, tells us to set three cards aside and add the Argonoth and Sarn Jabir to the staging area. Okay, so we're going to set some cards aside. We're going to attach the boons to my heroes. And here we go. Okay, we're setting cards aside. I actually forget to set one of them aside. It's in the deck. I gotta go find it later. All right, Sarn Jabir is immune. It's a 3-4. And then after it's explored, we deal one damage to each exhausted character. And then the Argonoth is X threat. X is number of players. Two progress. And we cannot travel there until we've already cleared Sarn Jabir. While this is the active location, we get to skip the combat phase. Okay, speaking of the combat phase, this quest has a really interesting mechanic going on during stage one as we're on the river just trying to float along peacefully. Enemies get plus two defense and cannot be engaged. We skip the encounter phase. The players cannot advance while the Argonauts in play. So this is the time of the quest where we're just going down the river and the enemies haven't found us yet. When we get to Sarn Jabir, that's when they start shooting at us from across the shore. And then we portage the boats, get back on the river, go through the Argonoth, and then we dock around where the Falls of Raros are. So this quest does a really good job of basically keeping us safe from enemies during the first stage because the river's so wide, they can't get to us. They can shoot some arrows at us, though. And then uh, once we finally get out of the boats, that's when we start having some real combat. And that's why if you get a bunch of enemies early, they're just sitting up there in staging, ready to engage you. And that's what makes this quest pretty unpredictable. Hopefully we just get one enemy while we're trying to clear this first quest stage. Gotta make a lot of progress though. Okay, opening hand, what do I want? Well, I'd like to get Galadriel her mirror. She would also like a silver harp so she can keep the card that the mirror helps us find. And then uh, Sylvan's, yeah, this is a Sylvan deck. So Haldir, his brothers, and all of his kinfolk, I want them to help us, help us get through these orcs. Okay, like I said, Bond of Friendship deck. So we have five heroes, which is pretty cool. I have a lot of cards I want to find. I only have a maximum of two copies of any card, so it's going to be tricky to find anything I'm really looking for. Well, there's a silver harp. Mary showed up. We got some Lembus. That's going to be very helpful. Uh, whoops, we got a dropped card. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, oh my gosh, the mirror. Excellent. I broke the mirror. All right, we also got Elrond's Council and card draw and a little bit of willpower boosting with Frodo's Intuition. My goodness, I got the silver harp and the Mirror of Gladril in my opening hand. So I am definitely keeping this. That was very fortunate. That, that's excellent. No Sylvan stuff though. So I'm not getting any real ally help here early on. All right, starting threat of 38, that's scary. Uh, no little custom dial, cause I gotta put five resource tokens out. And yeah, you can see why I use the dial. It just messing around with these little tokens while I'm trying to also look through the phone and standing up is kind of a pain. Okay, so uh, let's get this Lembus into play. So I'm going to put that on Boromir so you can ready the attached hero and heal up to three damage. Uh, super, super useful because Boromir is definitely going to be doing some defending because that's what he does in this quest, right? Let's pop the ring on and use Frodo's ability to gain a resource. I'm going to give that resource to Galadriel so I can start buying these spirit cards. All right, so she's going to get the mirror. So we hit this thematic note, Mirror of Gladril, attach it to Gladril. You can exhaust it, search the top 10 cards of your deck for a card, add it to your hand, shuffle your deck, and then randomly discard a card from your hand. So there is always a little bit of peril when you gaze into the Mirror of Gladril. But I'm glad she has it. I feel good uh, with my decision to use her in this quest. It just seemed very thematic. Okay, let's exhaust Gladril. We're going to drop our threat by one, and we get to draw a card, and we get the Tree People, TTP. 
Love that card. We just need some Sylvans to go with it. All right, time to quest. So you don't really have to worry about combat because you don't engage any enemies. So let's send everybody else. It's seven against four. We eventually have to clear two locations. We need to make progress. Oh boy, we get a Uruk High Archer. Peril, toughness one, archery X. X is the number of players in the game. When revealed, discard an ally you control. Well, okay, I'm glad I didn't put an ally into play. We make two progress. And like I said, we cannot engage this guy. I'll explain what toughness is later, but his archery does trigger because we are not skipping the combat phase. Let's travel to Sarn Jabir. I hope I'm saying that right. It's going to take four progress to clear, and when we clear it, one damage will be dealt to each exhausted character. Uh, this is where Gladriel is going to be really helpful. I haven't even talked about her second ability and her laundry list of abilities she has. All right, one archery from this uruk -hai going on Boromir, so he takes a hit. Uh, pretty thematic. And then, uh, yeah, next round, I would love to clear this thing this round. So let's see what we get. Okay, Bulwark of the West. This is a way to remove condition attachments. Now, the art has one of the beacons to be lit, but the flavor text is actually a line from Boromir at the Council of Elrond where he talks about the valor of the people of Gondor. And, I mean, ultimately that is the reason he gets corrupted by the ring. So I think it's pretty thematic for this quest to play uh, a card that has some of Boromir's ideals and thoughts. Okay, uh, Mirror of Gladril. Look at the top 10 cards. Okay, there's Sam. We had a Sylvan. Horns Cry, don't need that. Nenya, big willpower push. Uh, some will. I already have that card. Okay, there's another Sylvan. Boromir Shield. Oh boy. Uh, another heavy duty Sylvan. Host of Gladrum. And another Harp. No. Okay, it is definitely down between Sam and the Shield. Now, I don't have combat yet, but I will. I mean, I know I'm going to need that Shield. But this is also a great round to play an ally that quests for two. Sam only costs one because I control Frodo. But Nenya could also boost my willpower by four. But I'd have to exhaust Galadriel. But that's okay. She's got, she's got four hit points. All right. So what's more important? Getting the shield for future combat or getting an ally in and trying to clear Sarn Jabir without having many characters exhausted? Ah... Uh, I've played this deck against this quest like three times. I know I'm going to need that shield. It's going to be so important. Ah, oh, jeez. But ah, I debated. Uh, I really debated. I wonder what you guys would have done if you feel like commenting and telling me which one you would have picked. I end up going with Sam. Let's go with Sam. So he's going to quest for two without exhausting because Gladriel says the round the allies enter play, they don't exhaust the quest. I have Ally Mary in my hand, so that's going to help as well. So I think I think I just try to get through the Rapids here. Okay, so we have the Silver Harp. So let's do the Mirror, so I shuffle my hand. Okay, we would have got rid of Elrond's Council, but I played the Harp. The Harp says Exhaust the Harp. Keep the card you would have discarded. Okay, so I'm going to put the Ring on. I'm going to give a resource to Gladril. Gladril's going to spend the resource. I'm going to put Sam in for one. So he's going to quest for two without exhausting. Aragorn has two resources. And that'll let me play Mary. Now, Aragorn also has the ability to ready himself by spending a resource after committing to the quest. But I'm going to put in Mary. Mary says, give all unique allies plus one willpower. So Mary and Sam are going to be questing for six without exhausting, which is pretty huge for this turn of the game. I'll also commit Aragorn. So we have sent a total of eight. Oh, man, another enemy. Urukai Hunter, two threat, 413. When revealed... Uh, I either have to reveal another encounter card or I get attacked. <laughs> uh, second guessing not putting that shield on Boromir, let me tell you, because the shadows are nasty. All right, we're getting attacked. So he's attacking for four. Boromir is defending for two. Uh, attacking enemy gets plus one, plus two if the printed hit points of the defending character are less than the hit points of the attacking enemy. Okay, well, thank goodness Boromir has five printed hit points. He is going to take three damage, and then I'm going to use Lembus to ready him back up so he doesn't die when we clear Sarn Jabir, because if he had taken one more damage, he'd be dead. Okay, we do clear it, so all exhausted characters take a damage. Uh, this represents the orcs across the river shooting at us as we're trying to get through the rapids, and Frodo actually takes an arrow in the 
back, but the mithril rings save him. Aragorn's the only one who takes a damage. I'm going to drop my threat by one because I'm going to exhaust Galadriel, and she draws me a defender of the Nath. Okay, so I finally have a Sylvan ally in hand. And now let's travel to one of the most iconic places in Middle-earth, the Argonoth. So we get to skip the combat phase, which means we skip archery, because archery happens in the combat phase. So that's nice. No archery damage being dealt. Okay, next turn we draw a Galadrium healer. I'm very glad to see her. She's going to be extremely useful. Let's gaze into the mirror. All right, Legolas, Thorngill, the shield. Okay, Lembus, uh, another Legolas, another Sylvan, another Sylvan. Threat reduction with a willpower boost. The shield is back. And Nenya. All right. Oh, man. I really want this shield, but I also really need to get out of this stage. So I'm going to grab Nenya so we can do a big willpower push. All right. Let's just do what the mirror says. Shuffle my hand. The card I would have got rid of is Hotam Bombadil. That would have been fine, I guess. Okay. I get to keep it because of the harp. All right. Nenya gives Gladriel the lore resource icon, and then I can exhaust her to add her willpower to somebody else's uh, in the quest phase. That's awesome. Speaking of awesome, Gladrium Healer coming into play, healing one damage off of all of my heroes, which uh, is great because now there's no more damage on the board. Finally, Frodo's Intuition, we're going to give all of my heroes plus one willpower, draw a card for each Hobbit hero, and we get Olorian and Haldir. Oh yeah, Haldir's here. Okay, excellent. And yeah, that, that was really good. Let's put on the ring. We're going to give the resource to Galadriel because she now has lore and spirit. So it's always good to give resources to a hero who has two different resource spheres. Helps pay for multiple cards. And like I said, I want to get out of this stage because if we keep revealing enemies, I'm, well, you'll see, it's bad. <laughs> you don't want to get a bunch of enemies built up. So we're up against three and we are sending 11. We got to travel through the Argonoth. I think Boromir and Frodo will join in as well. The Gladrium Healer does not exhaust a quest because of Gladrill's ability. Yeah, so let's add a little more. And okay, here's one of the burdens we've shuffled in. Okay, so Doomed One, Surge, Pursued by the Enemy, and then all engaged enemies attack me. Like I said, that could whiff, so that's why I chose that one. And we get the River Anduin, which is a 2-5. A so we only added two threat. But yeah, that, that burden is the reason I, I the reason I chose it is because if you don't have any enemies engaged with you, it can whiff, but it, it can also be extremely terrible. Okay, so after we clear the Argonoth, we need to make one more progress than I'm currently making. So I am going to play Elrond's Council, and we are going to boost my willpower by one. Obviously, I should have done that before I got rid of the Argonoth location, but uh, boosting my willpower by one gives me just enough to have made our way down the Great River, and now we advance to stage 2A, the company divided. Remove the ring bearer and each card attached to it from the game. We ignore the text on the one ring that says if it leaves play, we lose. And then it says reduce each enemy's engagement cost to zero until the end of the encounter phase. Skip the travel phase this round. So yeah, that's why you don't want a bunch of enemies sitting up there and staging. They're all going to come and get you. All right, Frodo is currently off on his own, making a decision about where the company should go to be forced at the end of the refresh phase shuffle seat of seeing and frodo's choice into the encounter discard pile then place the encounter discard pile on the bottom of the encounter deck starting with the first player each player creates his own staging area and advances to a different stage 3a of his choice in player order each player moves one encounter card from the staging area to his when there are no encounter cards left at the stage discard it we get to skip the travel phase, which is nice because this would have made us raise our threat at the end of the travel phase, but we don't have to. Okay, all the enemies' engagement costs are zero, so these are both coming down. They're both attacking for four, and I don't have a shield on Boromir, so that's not great. I can raise my threat by one to ready Boromir, and then I'm going to use Gladriel and drop my threat by one and draw a card. So net result is no threat increase. Boromir is ready, and the card I draw is another Silver Harp. Okay, I do not need that. Galadriel will take one point of archery, and yeah, two big attacks coming, both for four. So uh, let's play the tree people. So I'm going to pull back a Sylvan. I get to look at my top five cards, and I can put a Sylvan into play. So let's see if I get some help here. All right, uh, Elrond's Council, no. Ooh, oh, the Greenwood Archer. That's huge. Ah, there's the shield. Uh, well, I got one choice, but it's a good one. He has two attack, and then he readies a hero when he comes in. 
So let's pop him into play, and that will ready Aragorn. Uh, so if I hadn't been able to ready Aragorn, my plan was to just kill whatever Sylvan this was, and uh, I would have had to grab Overcome by Grief, but, I mean, that was really my only, my only uh, way to handle this. So uh, getting two enemies on turns one and two really hurt. I mean, normally I come into this with uh, one enemy, so having two is, uh, it's hard right now, especially with no shield. Alrighty, time for Boromir to show some quality. He is going to defend for two. Uh, the shadow is, if the defending character has fewer printed hit points than the attacking enemy, uh, he does not, so the shadow, rest of the shadow doesn't matter. Boromir is going to take two damage from this attack, and I can raise my threat by one to ready him, because I readied him in the encounter phase. But I'm going to actually have Aragorn defend this one. Okay, no shadow on that one. So Aragorn's also going to take two damage. And then uh, swinging back. So yeah, let's ready Boromir by raising my threat. He's allowed to do this once per phase. And he will be able to attack for three. And the archer is attacking for two. So I'm attacking for a total of five. And this is where toughness comes in. He has toughness one, so I'm attacking for five, dealing four damage, but toughness cancels one of those damage, which is just enough to kill this guy. So that makes direct damage really hard. Okay, let's finish resolving 2B. So we go into the refresh phase, raise my threat, everybody readies, and now I'm going to shuffle in these two cards into the encounter discard pile, and then I'm going to place the encounter discard pile on the bottom of the encounter deck, and then I get to choose a stage three to go to. But thematically, what's happening here is chaos. This is where Aragorn's like, you know, what, what's happening? Why is everything going wrong on this day? And so to maximize the chaos that's happening, I'm going to randomly choose a stage three. They all have similar text. They each have a bonus. So we went one, two, three, four, and I was going to roll until I got one of those numbers. We got two. So we're going to do the second one. Okay, so let's see which stage three I am currently at. We are at the seat of Amon Hen. So after stage 2B is discarded, if the total threat of encounter cards in the staging area is less than four, I reveal a card. It is less than four, so I need to reveal a card. And of course, it's the uruk -hai Hunter. So he is going to either make an immediate attack or I reveal another card. Boromir should be ready. Uh, yeah, but he can't, he can't take an attack. Any shadow boost would kill him, and then Overcome by Grief would be attached to somebody. I also don't want to chump, because then I would have Overcome by Grief. Ah, man, I think I need to reveal a second encounter card. Black Feathered Arrows, when revealed until the end of the round, add one to the archery total at this stage for each ally currently at this stage. Uh, that's fine, because we are still in the round, because this is all happening at the uh, at the refresh phase. So we're okay here, we're not in the new round. 3B, no progress needed. If Frodo Choice is not in play, anytime players would place progress on this quest, we discard an equal number of cards from the encounter deck instead. Once Frodo's choice is revealed, we're gonna to advance to stage 4A. Then, after questing successfully, we get to draw two cards and drop our threat by two. So that's the bonus we get on this one. Uh, that's nice, I'll take that. All right, let's go into the next round. I already raised my threat. And then we get the Woodland Courier. Okay, that can help us do some questing. Okay, the first card we're going to play is O'Lorian. So you exhaust it to reduce the cost of the next Sylvan you play by one uh, to a minimum of one. Let's put that on Galadriel. Very good. And then the next card we are going to play is the Galadriel Healer. So let's do some healing. So she is bouncing back into play and she's only going to cost one thanks to O'Lorian and heal one damage off of each of my heroes. And now let's gaze into the mirror. What do I want? I want that shield. There is no other card that I can imagine in these top 10 that is more important than the shield. Ah, okay, there it is. So we will definitely grab the shield. We will shuffle these cards back in and then give our hand a shuffle and whatever card we would have discarded, the silver harp is going to keep for us. Excellent, okay. So since Boromir has the Gondor trait, he is defending for four now, which is uh, really, really important. Okay, I'm going to spend two spirit resources. We're going to pop in this Woodland Courier. She places a progress on a location, two if it's a forest location. And then just like the Galadrium Healer, she's not going to exhaust the quest because this is the round she came into play. And we want to make a lot of progress. There's no reason to stick around here. You want to get through this encounter deck as fast as possible. 
So if I send Sam, Mary, the two Sylvans, and Pippin, that is eight. And then if I need to use Galadriel, I can boost it by four. So currently eight against four. And the card we get, man, alive. Jeez, a piece. Okay, another of these uruk Hunters. I'm just getting really unlucky revealing a third copy of that card. Okay, he's attacking for four. Boromir's defending for four. Uh, he makes an additional attack. Okay. So Boromir will have my threat raised so he can ready. And then he's going to defend again. Go, Boromir! And let's see. Discard a non-objective attachment I control. I could get rid of old bogey stories or this Lembus. Uh, but I have a silver harp in hand. So let's just get rid of the silver harp and I can play it again if I need it. I pretty much have everything I need. So the mirror isn't as important anymore. Okay, uh, so Boromir did great. He's doing thematically what he should be doing. He's doing all the defending and attacking. So he handled that. We added two threat, which means we will be discarding two cards. And if I wanted to, I could use Galadriel and Nenya to mean I discard six cards. Oh my goodness, what a great card to get rid of. All right, Fallen into Evil is very dangerous. You need to make sure you have condition removal. And because we quested successfully, let's drop our threat by two and draw two cards. My threat was getting a little scary. Uh, we get two Sylvans, that's great. I'm glad to get those. And let's travel to this location so I don't have to raise my threat at the end of the travel phase. And both of these enemies are coming down and they're both attacking for four. So we have three enemies attacking for four and archery one to deal with. So I readied Boromir in the engagement phase. You always have to remember he can only ready once per phase with the errata. So you need to ready him in a different phase before combat so you can at least ready him once in combat. Okay, uh, let's take the archery on Galadriel. Three attacks of four coming, no feigned voices, and no tricks in my hand. Okay, we might be, be getting uh, overcome by grief here. Let's, uh, let's use Galadriel real quick. Do we get anything helpful? Not really. Okay, so we are definitely getting attacked. Boromir can handle two of these, so four against four. Uh, no shadow. Okay, great. And then raise my threat by one. He's going to pop back up. He's going to defend. Go, Boromir! Uh, no shadow. That's a good burden to see go away. And then we have one more attack of four coming. Aragorn can survive, I hope. And it's uh, raise my threat by three. Okay, uh, that, was, that was dangerous because an attack boost could have killed him. But I, I took the risk. I wanted to not lose a character. So Aragorn is gonna take some good damage there. All right, attacking back. So Boromir can't ready anymore. And then my two Sylvans can attack for a total of three. And then all these enemies have toughness one. So any damage is reduced by one. So I can only dish out one point of damage. Yuck. All right, uh, next round. So this is a round where it's a combat heavy round. See, I drew a card that's gonna help me quest. I don't care about questing, I really don't. I need to worry about combat. So sometimes when you're playing this game, you really need to know what your priority is. And in this case, it's killing things. It's surviving combat. The quest stage isn't really as important. So we're gonna use O'Lorien to put in Haldir of Lorien. So he's a good body to get on the table, plus he's Haldir, so that's awesome. And yeah, he's a good stats. And so he can either take an attack or he could help me kill. Now the mirror of Galadriel. And like I said, I want something to help in combat. I think the number one card I would love is Feigned Voices. That would cancel an attack. All right, the host of Galadriel, expensive. I don't really think that's helpful. Tree people could be good. Uh, Lembus could also be good. Action advantage and healing. Two nice Sylvans. Uh, yeah, the Marksman of Lorien would really help me kill something. I have one in hand though. Lembus could ready Aragorn and heal him. The host of Galadrium pulls all my Sylvans back and puts them back into play, but I really don't have many good effects on my Sylvans that I have in play right now. I think... Jeez, uh, Lembus is so good. That would heal all three damage off of Aragorn. But I think I need just to get bodies on the table, and as you can see, I have a lot of good Sylvans in this deck. So let's go with the tree people and I can pull back the healer again and put her into play next turn and do a bunch of healing. So I think the tree people is going to be the best bet here. And let's see if I can't get another nice Sylvan in play. So um, once per phase, you're allowed to use this card. 
And I have to remember, though, no more Silver Harp. So I could lose this card. I kind of forgot I didn't have the Silver Harp anymore. So let's see what card I'm going to lose. One of the ones in the middle. Uh, okay, the Nath Guide. So because I looked in the mirror, I have to discard a random card from my hand. Forgot I didn't automatically get to keep whatever card I grabbed. So <laughs> uh, I'm happy with that. All right, we're going to pull back the healer. Now I get to look at my top five cards and put a Sylvan into play. Okay, I could do some questing. I could find an event. There's a good attacker. Um, but he gets his boost when he comes in from your hand, not from the tree people. So I wouldn't be able to do direct damage. And these guys all have toughness anyway, so direct damage isn't as important. Let's pop in this Marksman of Lorien with the tree people. And she chooses an enemy and reduces the defense of that enemy by two. So we're going to choose the hunter on the right. And then I'm going to play the one from my hand. And I'm going to choose the archer on the left. So both of those enemies no longer have defense. And I also put in two allies that each attack for three. So that should really help in combat. So three Sylvans came into play. All of them are going to help in the combat phase. And let's see if we can't help Boromir get through these enemies. Okay, quest phase. Haldir does not exhaust a quest. The other two Sylvans don't have willpower. Mary and Sam for two more. Aragorn's going to send his two. Spend a resource to ready. Pippin's going to send his two. So that's ten. We're up against zero. We've got to make four progress to clear the active. And we get the exact same location, the river Anduin. So that's only adding two threat. Let's use Galadriel to boost our willpower by four more. So that means we are going to be able to discard a total of eight cards. I know Frodo's choice is way down there, so there's really no chance of me getting it. All right, uh, the location, 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 location. This is not surprising since I've revealed nothing but enemies. All right, we got rid of a bunch of locations, and then we're going to travel to this river Anduin. So it's, it's five progress, which is pretty annoying. And then combat. So we got archery one. I can put that on one of these marksmen. And then, yep, okay, they're all attacking for four again. So Boromir is going to defend and goodbye lust for the ring all right that's a good one to see boromir is going to have his threat go up so he can ready and then he's going to defend another attack of four uh no shadow on that guy i'm glad to see that one i don't like revealing that one now because that one makes me discard an ally so i'd much rather see that one as a shadow and then we got another attack of four coming haldir can defend for two with three hit points ah crap plus one plus two if my hit points are less. It doesn't matter. Haldir's dead. Haldir! All right. Overcome by grief. Man, thematic for me. Losing Haldir. So now if a character is destroyed, uh, we have to trigger the effect on this card. I'm going to put it on Pippin. All right. Pippin really liked Haldir. Okay. Uh, we survived and we need to swing back. Two of these enemies have no defense, so an attack of four kills that archer. And then, let's see, an attack of four would also kill the other hunter that we took the defense off of. But I actually do the most damage by attacking for five with my two Sylvans and killing the hunter that we did not remove the defense from. And then Aragorn attacking for two can actually hit this guy for one. So I think that was the best way to do it. Now we're down to one enemy. So we did really well there. That was our priority that round. And I would say we succeeded. So let's go into the next round. And now we're ready to make some good progress. And we are running out of time. My threat is 44. So uh, that's not great. The card we draw is some Gondorian Discipline. Cancel up to two points of damage just dealt to a Gondor character. All right, so that's a great card, thematic. Okay, um, what to do here? So using the mirror means I could lose the card, but uh, let's start out by healing. So the Gladrium healer is going to come in. I'm going to not use Olorian. I'm going to heal one damage off of all of my heroes. My plan was to use Olorian to play the defender of the Nath, but then I decide I really don't need to play this guy because he can't handle an attack of four. So I, I should have retconned a little bit and gave myself a resource back because I could have used Olorian to put in this healer. Actually, I also keep thinking I have Frodo, so I'm generating one more resource. So uh, I'm always kind of 
in the back of my mind thinking I can get a resource on anybody. And then I get about halfway through planning and realize, oh yeah, Frodo is off on his own and I don't have his ability. Okay, I don't know if I want to use the mirror. Not sure what I would find that is helpful at the moment. So let's go questing. The healer doesn't exhaust. I'm going to send Mary, Sam, the courier. I'm going to once again send Aragorn and then spend his resource to pop him back up. And I'll also send Pippin. So we are sending a total of 10 against zero. And the card we get is the slopes of Amon Hen. So in order to travel there, we have to engage an enemy. All right. Now, I had forgotten last round because I quested successfully, drop my threat by two and draw two cards. So I'm going to do that right now because it really doesn't affect anything because I didn't shuffle my deck or anything. And then, uh, yes, I am going to make seven progress. Let's use Galadriel and Nenya. So we are going to make 11 progress. Five goes on the active. So that means we're going to discard six cards. And once again, I get to drop my threat by two and draw two cards. So let's see what six cards we get rid of. Okay, uh, good, good, good. Yep, I'm glad to see enemies go away. Yep, goodbye, that's a good one. Okay, I think we're getting close. We could easily find Frodo's choice now. Dropping my threat by two. There we go, Thorngill and Feigned Voices. Those were two good cards. All right, very happy about that. I can't travel there because there's no enemy to grab. So we're gonna leave that in staging. And then, yeah, let's get attacked. No more archery, an attack of four. Boromir's defending for four. And Frodo's choice. All right, cool. So at the end of the combat phase, that's gonna get discarded as the shadow. And then that means we're going to advance to stage four. At least that's how it should have worked. Shadow cards are not discarded until the end of combat. I just have a bad habit of always discarding them. So I'm going to trigger all this stuff right now. So I get Frodo and then I attach Frodo's choice to Frodo. So I am no longer allowed to lose the first player token, which of course doesn't matter in a solo game. And then I advance to 4A. So the ring bearer sets out. When revealed, add Parth Gallon to the staging area. If it is your quest phase, end the phase. Do not resolve the quest. All right, let's take a look at Parth Gallon. So it's a 2-4, river, lawn, immune, travel, search the encounter deck and discard pile for an enemy and add it to the staging area. We cannot win the game while this is in play. All right, so we're gonna definitely get one enemy when we go to travel there. And so let's look at 4B. 4B is 16 progress needed. During the quest phase, we reveal one additional encounter card for each player in the game. And then response, after an enemy is revealed at this stage, raise your threat by X to engage that enemy. X is that enemy's threat. Each player at any stage may trigger this ability once. So that's how you're gonna grab enemies from whoever is at this stage in a multiplayer game, distracting the enemies, luring them over to you. Uh, in a solo game, it just gets threat out of the staging area, which is also very helpful. All right, let's head back to combat. Like I said, this all should have happened at the end of the combat phase, and that's okay though, it doesn't affect anything. So we had already been attacked, we survived the attack, we attack back, kill this guy, and now we're gonna advance into the next round. So how do we win? We gotta make the 16 progress, revealing two cards a turn, and we also have to clear Parth Gallon. Okay, we get a questing Sylvan. She drops my threat by one when I play her. And yeah, so let's boost up our willpower. Now the Seat of Seeing is in this encounter deck still. I would love to be able to travel to it and clear it. So uh, hopefully we reveal that. All right, Clebrian Stone given to Aragorn by Gladriel as they were leaving Lorien. He now can quest for two more and he has the Spirit Resource Icon. I put the ring on Frodo to gain a resource. I am going to spend a lore resource to put in Henemarth. He's gonna take a peek at the top card. Uh, oh, ill fate. All right, Peril Surge attached to a hero counts as a condition attachment. Forced after a character you control is destroyed, raise your threat by two. Not the worst thing. Just don't let anyone get destroyed. Okay, uh, anything else here at the last second? How about Olorian spending a spirit resource and we will put in this handmaiden. So she will quest for two without exhausting. And when she enters play, she drops my threat by one. So I'm down to 40. All right. Well, unfortunately, the card I'm revealing surges. So I really don't know what's coming. And to be honest, I should have waited to use Henemarth until he committed to the quest. Commit him to the quest. And then after all characters committed to the quest, 
exhaust him and see what card was coming. Then he would have still been sending his one willpower. So we'll see if one willpower makes a difference. I'm going to send almost all my allies. I'm not sending the ones who don't have willpower. I will send Aragorn and then ready him back up. And I will send Pippin, and then, of course, Galadriel and Nenya can work together if I want. All right, Ill Fate. Well, we should put that on Boromir for thematic reasons. So Boromir has suffered an Ill Fate. And we got to reveal two more cards. That surges into Black Feathered Arrows. Oh, this isn't good. Add one to the archery total for every ally we control. Uh, okay. And then the next card. Oh, yes! The Seed of Seeing. I mean, the odds were pretty good. I think there's only three cards total left, so it was a one in three shot. All right, the Seed of Seeing is definitely where we're going to be traveling to. No enemies, lots of archery. Uh, we are up against six, so we're going to make a good amount of progress. Let's use Galadriel and Nenya to make it even more. So we are going to make a total of 14 progress. And then we are going to travel to the Seat of Seeing. Man, that worked out really nice. Let's go see what we can see. Six progress, immune, and then response. When it's explored, choose a burden card in play in the encounter deck or in the discard pile and remove it from the game. Shuffle the encounter deck. If you are playing campaign mode, remove it from the campaign pool. Ah, oh, yes. We get to get rid of one of our burdens. That's awesome. All right, let's deal out nine archery. So I'll just scatter some arrows all over the place here. And then we're going to take a look in the mirror, and I'm going to actually pick Lembus. And then I forget to do the random discard from my hand. I do play the Lembus, but I never use it. So uh, let's just say I discarded it, I guess, because I never actually used the card I grabbed. And let's go into the next round. Okay, the card we draw is the host of Galadrium. It's a fun card. You get to replay all your Sylvans. But honestly, thematically right now, we're kind of past the point where the Sylvans would be helping us. We are definitely on our own. So I'm going to try not to use the Sylvans as much. We're going to put into play Thorngill. So Thorngill costs three. I attach it to a non-fellowship, non-baggins hero I control. And then I get to search my collection for a different version of that hero and attach that version to the existing hero. I gain the resource sphere, and I also gain the card text ability. So we are going to put in Lore Aragorn, and that means in the refresh phase, I can take an action and drop my threat back down to my starting threat. It's at 41 right now. Okay, here's the Lembus that I shouldn't have had, or I would have lost a different card. I just wouldn't have used the mirror, to be honest. Uh, I keep forgetting that I no longer have that silver harp. Okay, I am so glad I have the Horn's Cry and Gondorian Discipline in hand. I don't have the Horn of Gondor, but I have two of my Boromir cards, so I'm going to count on Boromir doing most of the combat here. Let's have Frodo put on the ring. I'm going to give a resource to Galadriel, and then she is going to put the Silver Harp into play. And then now I can use the mirror without fear of losing the card that I draw. So let's look at the top ten cards here. That's nine, ten. All right, Legolas and Legolas. we got Elrond's Council and Gimli. Uh, let's see, Andriel, I already have a shield. Um... I'm going to pick Andril. Legolas and Gimli really don't do much in this part of the novel. They're off hunting on their own, so uh, not having them in play is okay thematically. Let's just get Andril so Aragorn has his sword and he gets his stats boost. And we need to commit to the quest. I want to clear the Seat of Seeing, and we have to reveal two cards. And there's only two cards left in the encounter deck. Okay, we are sending 14 against 5. The first card we get is, okay, well there's that burden pursued by the enemy. Doomed one, surge. All engaged enemies attack me. Okay, it whiffs again, but earlier in the game, that could have easily killed me. And then, of course, the uruk -hai Hunter. All right, when revealed, either it attacks me or I reveal another encounter card. I'm going to have it attack me, but first I need to shuffle the discard pile and create an encounter deck because I ran out of cards during the quest phase, so you always reshuffle if you run out in the quest phase. That's the only time you do that. If you run out in the middle of the combat phase, you don't need to reshuffle. Hey, oh man, that's awesome. Okay, there goes that treachery, and Boromir handled that attack. That was all card number one. Card number two is another Slopes of Amon Hen. Okay, so when that enemy was revealed, I could have raised my threat by two to engage it. I forgot about that, so I'm going to do that now. But technically, you have to do it when it's revealed, so... Uh, you don't reveal the next card and decide to do it. But I just forgot I could do that to get that threat out of staging. So I totally would have. No reason not to. It was going to come down and get me anyway. And I have Lore Aragorn. 
Okay, right now we're making six progress, which is exactly what I need to clear the seat of seeing. So with two progress to go on the quest, let's just use Galadriel and Nenya right now, and we'll get the 16 progress on the quest. So then all I have to do is clear Parth Gallon to win this game. Okay, so now victory one, and I get to choose a burden and get rid of it. The burden I'm going to choose is that pursued by the enemy. Even though it whiffed when I just revealed it, it can kill me. Like earlier in the game, I was engaged with those enemies and I could not have handled all those attacks because it's each enemy. And believe me, later on in this game, that's gonna be a real bugger. So we're gonna get rid of pursued by the enemy. That is no longer in our campaign. That was awesome. Now we're gonna to travel to Parth Gallon and we need to find an enemy and add it to the staging area. All the enemies have some sort of when revealed effect or surge. So I think though the hunter, the one that I keep revealing, I think I'm just gonna grab another copy of that. So let's get another uh, uruk High hunter and add that to the staging area to travel the Parth Gallon. And we're gonna be engaged with two orcs and this is going to be all Boromir. So as far as I'm concerned, nobody else is on the table. This is just Boromir defending the hobbits as he fights these orcs. I'm gonna raise my threat by one in the engagement phase. Shadow up, let's go Boromir. Time to show your quality. Boromir is gonna start out by letting out a mighty horn's cry and give all enemies minus three attack because we are in valor, our threat is above 40. Boromir is taking these attacks undefended. The first uruk takes a swing, plus one, plus two if we have fewer printed hit points. That would do two damage, but Gondorian Discipline keeps him safe. Now the second uruk is gonna take a swing at him, and no shadow. Boromir takes one damage. He is one hit point away from death. Time to swing back. Grabbing his mighty broadsword, he takes a swing at the first uruk dealing a damage. These guys are tough. He readies by raising our threat and deals a damage to the other Uruk. These enemies do not go down easily. In a final act of desperation, he activates his Boromir Bomb ability, dealing two direct damage to each of these Uruks. But they are tough. They each have one hit point remaining, and with that, the son of Gondor has fallen. All right, we go to the end of the round, 48 threat. That's kind of scary, but no problem. We have Aragorn to the rescue, right? Right? He's never late to arriving somewhere he should be to, you know, save someone's life. Come on, Aragorn. All right, Lord Aragorn, gonna drop my threat all the way back down to 38, because you go back to your starting threat. <laughs> 38, that was high. All righty, uh, let's collect our resources. Final round of the game here. All we gotta do is clear the active location. Yep, Legolas showing up after all the battle is done is very thematic. And I don't really need to do anything other than give Aragorn his sword. That'll give him plus one to his stats. And then we are going to just get out of here. All right, committing everybody to the quest except for Gladriel because, uh, yeah, she's not here anymore. Okay, so we have 18 willpower being committed to this quest. And we are currently up against six. We need to get through this location. And we have to reveal two cards. All right, card number one is the River Anduin. Okay, so that's two threat. Card number two, a Surging uruk High Tracker. And then it surges into, well, this is thematic, Orcs of the White Hand. When revealed, remove all damage from each enemy, and then each enemy at the stage gets plus one to their stats. Uh, that's like <laughs> incredibly thematic to reveal this at the last second when the Uruks are grabbing Merry and Pippin and running away. All right, cool. So we have a total of nine threat. We definitely make enough to clear Palath Gallon, and that is our victory condition. So we have won, but we lost Boromir, and the Uruks that he was not able to kill grab Pippin. They're also going to grab Merry, and we are going to have to try to track them down in the next quest, the Uruk High. The campaign resolution says, if fallen into evil is attached to a hero, add that hero to the list of fallen heroes. Thank goodness that didn't happen. And now we need to choose ill fate or followed by night and add it to the campaign pool. I'm gonna choose ill fate. I like choosing burdens that deal with characters being destroyed because it's easier to try to keep your characters alive than it is to put something unpredictable into the encounter deck. So we will be adding ill fate 
And then this also talks about choosing a hero to be captured. I am choosing Hero Pippin and then also Ally Mary. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, that was very thematic. I'm glad Boromir was able to show his quality there at the end. And I look forward to making the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.